Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and these are my predictions for the 2020 Academy Awards. Yes, it is that time again. The Oscars are upon us once more. And of course, as always, I'm here to give my final predictions for each and every one of the 24 categories to be presented at the Oscar ceremony. But in usual fashion, I'm not only going to be giving my final prediction on who is going to win, I'm also going to throw in my two cents and say who I think should win each and every award, and we'll see how many of those line up. So these are just my own predictions based on all of the precursor awards leading up to the night, as well as just my own gut feelings. <laughs> So everybody, make sure to leave your predictions in the comment section down below. Follow along as I live tweet the Oscars come Sunday night, and we can compare after the show is over. Let's see how we all do. We have a lot of awards to get through. Let's stop the chitter chatter and jump right into the predictions, starting with sound mixing. Ad Astra gets its only nomination of the evening. However, it will not get a win at this year's Oscars. Joker and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood are also Rans as well. And that leaves me with my personal pick on who should win for sound mixing, and that is Ford v. Ferrari. I just think it delivered impeccable sound across the board. It was mixed so beautifully. Honestly, the sound design in general was perfect in Ford v. Ferrari. So that's my pick on who should win. Ford v. Ferrari also took home one of the major awards from the Sound Guild, which is a big precursor heading into the Oscars. However, 1917 also took home one of the big awards from the same guild and got the BAFTAs. Plus, the history of war films just sweeping the sound categories is a bit much for me to ignore, not to mention 1917 just kind of has more universal support in general. So, it, uh, so honestly, I think this is the toss-up between the two, but my final prediction is that 1917 will win. Moving right along to sound editing, this time we take out Ad Astra, substitute in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, and like with Ad Astra, Rise of Skywalker can just Exit stage left. Again, Joker and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood are here. Great for the nod. They have no chance at winning. So it comes down once again to 1917 and Ford v. Ferrari. And for my pick on who should win, once again, I'm going with Ford v. Ferrari. For all of the reasons I just stated, having to create the sounds that they created here was just, I mean, out of this world. So... Honestly, I don't think any film did sound nearly as well as Ford v. Ferrari. And come awards night, I'm really hoping we at least get a split on these two awards. It's a high chance that we could get a split, but uh, for my predictions, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to play it safe, and I'm going to pick 1917 to win Best Sound Editing. Moving right along to Best Makeup and Hairstyling. First of all, I am so glad to see this category expanded out to five nominees. I never understood why we only got three when there was so much amazing hair and makeup to be recognized. While I think Maleficent Mistress of Evil did a wonderful job in this category, it has no chance of winning. Don't think Judy has any chance at winning either. When it comes down to who I think should win, it's a pretty easy bombshell out of the nominees here. Maleficent would actually be my second choice, but, uh, I mean, what they did in Bombshell is pretty spectacular. As for what I think will win, well, Joker and 1917 have a chance maybe to upset. With the Critics' Choice and the BAFTAs, it's pretty clear I think Bombshell will win. Moving right along to Best Costume Design, First off, speaking of Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, snubbed. I don't know how it didn't get nominated. I guess that's what happens when your film isn't critically all that well received. Even in categories you excel in, eh, the love just ain't there. Looking at our nominees, I honestly 
don't think the Irishman has any chance and would have been the one I replaced with Maleficent, honestly. Joker is the next to go get it on out of here, and I don't think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is necessarily winning in this one. So for my pick on who should win, I'm going with Little Women. I just thought the costumes were really beautiful, intricately put together, were able to stand out amongst so many other period pieces, and perfectly capture the essence of the film. Now when it comes to who will win, it gets a little trickier. So Little Women did just win the BAFTA for this. However, Jojo Rabbit won at the Costuming Guild Awards for Best Period costumes in which little women wasn't even nominated so i've gone back and forth and honestly i think either one of these two could take home this award however just because i really don't see it winning anything else and it did win the baftas which has a larger crossover than the smaller guild i'm gonna say little women will win when it comes to costumes Moving along to production design. Now this one is a really competitive category. The Irishman and Jojo Rabbit are my first to go. I really don't think that they're in this conversation at all. However, it becomes a very competitive three horse race from there. Now my pick on who should win easily is 1917. Just the sheer amount of detail and work that had to go into creating this entire battlefield with these really long takes, these continuous shots, just how much had to be built and dug and made is truly astonishing to me. And honestly, I respect what Parasite did particularly. I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood really recaptured everything, especially on a smaller scale. 1917 to me just blows it all away. And I certainly think it has quite the case after just winning the BAFTA for production design. However, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has two wins so far with the Critics' Choice Awards as well as the Art Direction, which is basically the Production Design Guild, if you will. Parasite also won in Art Direction, and I think it's been gaining momentum with the idea that they built this house from scratch. What makes my job real difficult on picking who I think will win, ultimately, I'm going to say Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. After seeing those miniatures that they built, and these like model sets, plus it is Hollywood, and Hollywood loves seeing old Hollywood. Next up, we have Best Visual Effects. Once again, I'm going to knock the Irishman out right off the bat. Some of those effects were a bit wonky, while others were very impressive. However, it just doesn't have the might to compete with the other four. Next, I have to knock out my pick for who should win, and that is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I just found the visuals in this film, the practical effects and like puppetry work with the special CGI visual effects was stunning. They did some great things. I thought it was gorgeous and probably the most beautiful film of the past year for me, but it has no chance at winning. <laughs> Next up, we have The Lion King, which has got a lot of ground, but it seems a general disdain for the film is really ruling it out of having a shot to truly win. Plus the debate between animation and live action, action CG work calls into question its legitimacy, if you will, even within the category and where it even belongs. So The Lion King, next to go. So that leaves us with Avengers Endgame, which won the Critics' Choice Award, as well as the Annie Award for Best Effects in a Live Action Film. Then we have 1917, which won the BAFTA Award for Best Visual Effects. Well, I have to tell you, Marvel has not won this category ever, and I don't think it wins this year either. My pick on who will win is going to be 1917. For Best Original Song, I think we can get rid of the song from Breakthrough right off the bat. <laughs> then Toy Story 4, you're next. So my pick on who should win actually comes down to Into the Unknown and Stand Up from Frozen 2 and Harriet, respectively. However, ultimately, my pick on who should win is Stand Up from Harriet. I really think the lyrical content of that song is beautiful and actually stands for Harriet Tubman's life rather than just the film, and it's performed beautifully by Cynthia Revo. So that would be my pick on who should win. Now when it comes down to who will win, Revo is right there hoping for her EGOT, but I think it will have to come another time 
because I don't think Stand Up actually is going to win. And the fact that Into the Unknown feels like a lesser version of Let It Go has really hampered it. Plus, I've noticed a pushback to Disney throughout this award season that has hurt Frozen 2 at large. So without even a Frozen 2 nomination, ah, I find it real tough for Into the Unknown to win. Not to mention the Golden Globes and Critics' Choice both went to I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. So that's the pick. That's who will win. Then we have Best Original Score which had some wonderful candidates, but Little Women, Marriage Story, and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. We're happy to see you, but you're the first three right up on out the door. My pick on who should win this award is actually very easy. 1917. Give Thomas Newman his frickin' Oscar already. This is his 15th nomination. This was far and away my favorite musical score of the year. It blew everything else out of the water. It was amazing. And I can't believe Newman is not going to win with this amazing score. Because with the Golden Globe, with the Critics' Choice, and now with the BAFTA behind it, certainly the score for Joker will win come Oscars night. And on any other year, if you just plucked 1917 out of the equation, I would be so happy. We have a female composer out here, and I do think Joker was the second best of these nominees. When will Newman have his time? We'll never know, but it's not this year. Best International Film, I haven't seen many of these, unfortunately. And France, I'm still bitter that Les Miserables Took the place of Portrait of a Lady on Fire, but we'll let that go for now. So three of these films are represented outside of this category alone, with Honeyland, Pain and Glory, as well as Parasite. So I think those are the only three with any sort of viable chance at all. However, who should win? Parasite. Who will win? This is an easy one. It's Parasite. Next up, we have Best Documentary Feature, another category I am unfortunately solely unprepared for. Who should win? I'm saying for Sama. Who will win? Ooh, for Sama just won the BAFTA, which is a huge win. However, American Factory won the Directors Guild as well as a couple of other minor guild awards, showing me a little bit more broad of support. So on my pick on who will win, I'm going with American Factory. Best Documentary Short. I haven't seen them, unfortunately. Not a single one, so I can't pick who should win. Who will win? Learning to skateboard in a war zone if you're a girl. Best Live Action Short. Now, I actually enjoyed all five of these when I saw them at the short presentation. However, my personal favorite and my pick for who should win is Saria. It was a based on true story really empathetic film that struck me deep in my in my heart cords. It had a lot of power behind it as well as a great message and I, I just really connected with it. However, Who Will Win was my second favorite and really close second and that is Brotherhood. Another one that has a really powerful message, some great direction, and a very deserving winner. And my pick on Who Will Win. Then we move to Best Animated Short. So on this category, I actually liked three of them a lot. I appreciated one, and I just did not like Sister. I, I don't know. It did nothing for me. I was not a fan. <laughs> Daughter would be my next to go, and honestly, Memorable, Kit Bull, and Hair Love all would be fantastic winners, and I would be happy for any of them. But ultimately, my pick on who should win is Hair Love. Combined a beautiful message with amazing animation, and I just think it executed across the board on every front a little bit better than the rest of the competition. Do you note, know, and since this might be one of their only chances to award someone of color, I say that Hair Love will win, also for those other reasons. It's it's just the best one. Then we move on to best animated feature. So I have to start off with my pick on who should win because it's also the only one of these that has like literally zero chance at winning. And that's How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. It just resonated with me on another level in comparison to the rest. I thought the script was amazing. It brought this trilogy to a stellar conclusion with absolutely draw-dropping animation. I loved it. Unfortunately, it will not win. 
I lost my body won the indie feature at the Annie's, but I also don't think that is going to win either, leaving us with Missing Link, Klaus, and Toy Story 4. And the next one to get the boot is actually Missing Link. It won that Golden Globe Award, which gave it a nice little energy boost, but I just don't see it. I don't think it's there. It's one of Leica Studios' weakest films. And against the other two, I, I think it's really fallen by the wayside since that shock win. Leaving us with a neck and neck race that is pretty much too close to call. Uh, we have Klaus, we have Toy Story 4. I turned on this camera not knowing who I was going to pick. So first off, we have Klaus that won big at the Annie Awards for Best Animated Feature. And then won even bigger with the BAFTA. And that was huge in propelling Klaus up into this conversation. However, the might of Pixar, which has also stacked up quite an impressive stack of wins, including the Critics' Choice Award, the Producer Guild Award for Best Animation, the Art Direction, Production Design Award for Best Animation, the Best Editing for Animation, and the Best Sound in Animation. So the guilds have all pretty much lined up to support Toy Story 4. And I think Toy Story 4 is more widely seen, but there seems to be such a backlash with Disney. So ultimately, I'm going to stick with the formula that an animated film that has won both the Annie and the BAFTA has never lost the Oscar. And that's going to be my final basis on my prediction. Next up, we have the award for best editing. Yeah. Oh, I don't, the Irishman, again, is the first to go. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. It's the first out. And although it has an Eddie Award, which is the Editing Guild, I think Jojo Rabbit is next out the door, leaving us with Ford v. Ferrari, Parasite, and Joker. My pick for who should win is very easy. Ford v. Ferrari, 100%. Don't even have to think about it. The editing in this film was absolutely phenomenal. Done. Now my pick on who will win, oof, it is quite the mess. Honestly, any of these three could win, but after that BAFTA win just this past Sunday, with the consideration that it has the flashiest editing of the three, I have to say, I'm going with it. Ford v. Ferrari to win Best Editing. Best Cinematography. Not much thought has to be put into this one, thankfully. Joker, you looked gorgeous, but you're out. The Irishman, you looked nice, but you got to go. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, top notch, but not today. And The Lighthouse, I was so happy to see you get in. You are my clear-cut number two pick. So who should win? 1917, Roger Deakins on a different level. It could be no one else. Who will win? Roger Deakins, 1917. It swept the season up till now, and for good cause, it is the best of the year. Now we get to Best Adapted Screenplay, and we have another race on our hands. So first off, The Irishman, you're out again. Joker, you're gone. And The Two Popes, thank you for playing. That leaves us with Little Women and Jojo Rabbit, duking it out for the win. Now my personal pick on who should win, well, that's Little Women. I just think Greta Gerwig did the best job at actually adapting the the work and bringing new life to it paying respect and just making it her own it is really a stellar job at adapting previous work now for who will win little women did win the critics choice however jojo rabbit has a whole lot of momentum right now after both winning the wga writers guild as well as the bafta so that really sealed the deal for me personally I think Jojo Rabbit will win. Then we move on to Best Original Screenplay, which is, again, a two-horse race, y'all. 1917, thank you for providing us a second female in the writing categories, but you got no shot. Marriage Story, a fantastic script who I think was the early front runner, but it just has not materialized. And then Knives Out, oh, I'm so glad you got nominated here. An amazing script, but I think the nomination is seen as a win there. So we come down to Parasite and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So for my pick on who should win, easily Parasite. I thought it had the best original script of the year. Probably my favorite script, period. Sophisticated, sharp, amazing, perfect. Now for who will win. It is really, really muddy. 
Once Upon a Time in Hollywood took home the Golden Globe for Best Screenplay, period, original, adapted, or otherwise. It then went on to win at the Critics' Choice Awards, where Once Upon a Time in Hollywood actually got a lot more love than it's received elsewhere. Meanwhile, Parasite won at the Writers Guild Awards. However, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood wasn't nominated there, due to Tarantino not being a member. But Parasite also went ahead and won at the BAFTAs. Ooh, so in the end, I just think there's more love for Parasite and maybe an air of Tarantino's been awarded for his stellar script writing before. So my pick on who will win, Parasite. And then we jump into acting categories. This should be quick. Best Supporting Actor. So my pick on who should win is actually Tom Hanks. I found him to be completely captivating and he elevated his film in a way none of the other nominees did. However, who will win? Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Then we move to Best Supporting Actress. My pick for who should win didn't even get nominated. My second pick for who should win didn't even get nominated. Justice for The Farewell and Justice for Jennifer Lopez. But with what I've got to work with, who should win? Ooh. Florence Pugh for Little Women. Yes, even her sitting there looking ridiculous amongst 12 year olds. However, who will win? Laura Dern, Marriage Story, still boggles my mind, but it's pretty much written in stone. Moving along to Best Lead Actress, who should win? Lupita Nyong'o, but the Academy hates horror and refuses to nominate it, so she didn't even get nominated. Thus, out of the nominees who should win, I'm actually going to say Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story. It was a pretty deep performance and certainly the best she's ever given in her career. Who will win? Renee Zellweger for Judy. Again, it's written in stone. Best Lead Actor, I'm still salty Taron Edgerton got snubbed, but I think who should win actually is who's going to win in this category. And it's Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. He was stellar, a complete transformation, and an amazing, amazing performance. Yet again, from an amazing actor who was long past due to win this award. Then we move into Best Director, which, woo, an all-male category yet again, huh? what you will but i definitely would have replaced a couple of these with their female counterparts but out of the nominees we have listed who should win uh easily is sam mendez for me for 1917 none of these other directors had as much of an impact on the final product of their film as mendez did thus he truly elevated it and directed it to be the the amazing film it was who will win Sam Mendes, 1917. He has swept the award season up to this point, and I don't think he stops come Oscar night. And then finally, Best Picture. So this is also a three-horse race. I love Ford v. Ferrari, but it's out. I love Little Women, but it's out. Marriage Story had so much early momentum, but it's gone. Jojo Rabbit, you're getting an award, but not this one. The Irishman seemed like a strong competitor until things started shaping up. Now, it doesn't really have a good opportunity to get in there. And Joker is that one that could pull the upset, but I just don't see it happening. So that leaves us with our three main contenders. 1917, Parasite, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So my pick on who should win actually is not my favorite of these three films. I think who should win is Parasite. It is the most revolutionary of the films. It is the most fresh. It is the most daring, groundbreaking. It is just perfectly executed across every single level. It's an expertly crafted film. And thankfully, it won that SAG award to stay alive in this race. And all three of these pictures have some big weaknesses in their resume. Starting with Parasite, it does not have any acting nominations but honestly that's its only real downside plus it is a foreign film and a film not in english has never won this award but it has a pretty stacked resume outside of the fact none of its actors got in then we move along to once upon a time in hollywood which won the critics choice award as well as the golden globe for best comedy or musical i'm gonna say this critics choice actually is not a wonderful indicator when it comes to the Oscars at large, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did get two 
acting nominations, as well as the director and the screenplay nominations, and it is certainly in contention with Parasite for best screenplay. And obviously, it, whoever wins screenplay early in the night, look out. Really, really great chance at taking home best picture. The only real negative here for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, no editing nomination. Then we move to 1917, which has really swept through the award season. It won the Golden Globe for Best Drama, it won the Producers Guild Award, it won the Directors Guild Award, as well as won the BAFTA, both for Best Film as well as Best British Film. However, like Parasite, it has zero acting nominations, and like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it doesn't have an editing nomination. I'm surprised, actually, it snuck out with a Best Original Screenplay, which certainly gives it a boost. Plus, all of the technical aspects have really bolstered it. In the end, coming in third place, I think, is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. With the preferential ballot, I just don't think it's going to be able to compete. However, I do think 1917 and Parasite are going to be very razor close. And you look and you wonder, are the Oscar voters going to really react to the fact that they whitewash the whole ceremony and give it to Parasite? Or are they going to continue to vote in the way they have and give it to the true technical achievement? Ultimately, I'm going to say the winner of Best Picture will be 1917. Though I won't be shocked and I certainly won't be mad if... Parasite walks up and accepts that award. So that's it. <laughs> Those are my predictions for all 24 awards to be presented at the Academy Awards ceremony. What do you think of my predictions? And again, make sure to leave your own predictions in the comment section down below. We'll come back, we'll reconvene, revisit our choices, and see how it all goes down come Sunday. If you like this video, hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on my latest videos. Love you all so much for your continued support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!